Today's video is about the Fostec Echo Gen 2 Replacement Caliber Conversion Hammer Spring, part number 4122. As you can see, we have the Fostec Echo uh, disassembled with the toggle springs out, but not completely taken apart. Uh, this below is the replacement spring. It is a slightly thicker wire and will replace the factory spring to allow it to work well with 762 by 39 5.45 by 39 and other hard primered ammunition. To remove the hammer from the trigger peg, we'll need to push out this hammer uh, pin right here. You can see it has the retaining pin that goes on the right side when it's reassembled. From there, the hammer easily pulls off, and you can see how the old uh, hammer spring wraps around it. You pop it loose just by spreading it and pulling it. The spring has a thinner area than a traditional hammer spring. So I took the opportunity to clean it up slightly before continuing the video. Here we have the two springs. Uh, on the right hand side we have the original spring which is not hard uh, strong enough to ignite most 762 by 39 Comblack ammunition. On the left we have the new hammer spring uh, which is quite a bit stiffer. It's only slightly larger diameter but you can see how it pushes itself back together. It does look slightly different. The new hammer spring is not the easiest to put on. You have to remember to keep the top loop above that. It seems to be easiest to spread it and stick it over that first area for the toggle spring. After you have it on the first one, you can work on spreading it backwards and going to the second. Once finally put on correctly, it will sit over the bottom hole. And at that point, we can reassemble the Fostec Echo Gen 2. So we'll start reassembly with the toggle bars with the spring over the bars. Remember, these both go in facing uh, the cut area out, outboard. We'll go ahead and set this upright so it doesn't run off on us quite so fast. I'm going to angle it slightly backwards to keep everything in line. I'm going to try and pinch this with my other fingers. Now we have to begin bending this backwards until the springs line up. Once it's started, you press until it catches and now we need to be real careful so we don't cause it to disassemble under spring pressure most people should be familiar with the next portion of this assembly as they've done it when they first installed their echo we'll place this spring inside the stop bar it has to be placed inside of that as well I have to bring this disconnector catch back off. Be very careful not to let it loose at the same time you do it. It does like to drop the hammer. I'm 
You want to hook that behind the cam piece there. And keep this held together while you insert it in your lower. Uh, for today's video, I'm using a Strike Industries jig as we slide it down in. From here, we'll put our hammer pins in and trigger pins. I like to put them in from the left side. At this point, spontaneous disassembly is a little less of an issue. May take a slight amount of wiggling to make everything line up. In this case, I'm going to tap it with a hammer. As we can see, we're flush there. Of course, now we have to put the safety in place. I normally put it in with a little bit of wiggling. This will only go in one direction. And from there we put the other side of our safety on it and we can screw it down. So how important is the replacement hammer spring? Well, it's pretty important, but it, you also need an extended firing pin. So before I shot this video, I took out the original firing pin and the original Fostec Echo spring and put 10 rounds through the rifle. Of those 10 rounds, as you can see in this picture, five of them ignited. And five of them, even though they had pretty good primer hits, did not light. After that, I swapped the firing pin for an extended firing pin that is 10 thousandths longer and again fired 10 rounds. Of those, seven failed to ignite, which isn't quite what I expected to see, but I continued on with swapping the extra power hammer spring into the Fostec Echo. After replacing the hammer spring, I again shot uh, two groups of 10 with the regular firing pin and two groups of 10 with the changed Red X extended firing pin. My first group of 10 had five that lit and five that failed to ignite, even with the extra power spring, but with a standard AR-15 firing pin. My second group of 10 had only one that ignited and nine that failed. Now, when I swapped over to the extended firing pin plus the extra power hammer spring inside the Echo, I then got uh, 20 good ignitions from my two sets of 10. So as we can see, it's very important to have both the extended firing pin and the extra power hammer spring, and that appears to bring reliability back. Now that particular ammunition I used is Vimple 56 grain 223. That is some of the hardest to ignite ammunition out of any uh, that I have found. It was loaded with 5.45 by 39 primers from the factory, and it's been harder to ignite in my experience than even 7.62 by 39 from any other manufacturer that I've found. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you're looking for a good extended firing pin, I've had good luck with the cheap ones from Red X Arms.